Hey everybody, welcome to the very first episode of Kitty Cat Go Live, where we discuss various topics relating to traveling and adventuring with your cat. I'm your host, Emily Hall, and today we will be chatting about harness and leash training your cat. We've really been having um, some great discussions about harness and leash training over in our Facebook group. So if you're not already a member there, I recommend joining. You can find us by searching Kitty Cat Go Adventure Team on Facebook. If you're watching with us tonight, be sure to say hello in the comments and let us know you're here. Take a screenshot of your view on your phone too and tag us at Kitty Cat Go Adventures in your Instagram stories. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. Our special guest for the evening is Hasara Lay. If you're active in the cat adventuring community at all, you probably know Hasara from Cat Explorer. She is chief explorer with her cats Lumos and Noxie. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and bring her on. Let's give her a warm welcome. Hi. Hey, Asara. How you Thank going, you so Emily? much. For I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, thanks for being here with us tonight. Um, I know I've had lots of people in my Facebook group excited to um, for the live tonight and getting to interact with you, and um, it's going to be fun. So um, tell us about yourself and your cats and Cat Explorer. Sure. So firstly, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. So I am Hasara Lay. I founded Cat Explorer. So Cat Explorer is a community and a brand for people who go exploring with their cats. Um, I actually started exploring with my cat, oh goodness, like 15 to 20 years ago now with my family cat. Um, at the time, so her name was Tabby. And at the time, I didn't realize it was a thing. It was just out of necessity. So my dad had a job which resulted in a lot of travel. And she had a lot of separation anxiety from us. And catteries weren't what they are now. They used to be these little steel boxes. And um, she just didn't deal well with a cattery. So we just used to take her along with us. And um, it was just a necessity. We didn't even know what we were doing. Um, the first carrier she had was those, you know, those shopping baskets that you get when you go grocery shopping? Literally two yeah. of those put on each other. And my mom tied it up <laughs> with some cable ties really not ideal because then every time we had to take her out we had to cut the cable ties and then redo it again <laughs> each time oh my gosh it was like ribbons tied up together because we didn't know what we were doing we tried a dog harness it was too big we didn't know about kitten harnesses or anything like that so um that was about 15 20 years ago um she traveled with us all around new south wales which is the state we live in um probably saw more of australia than a lot of people get to do as well um, and she lived for 23 amazing years. So it was wonderful having her. And then when my husband and I decided to adopt our two kittens, um, I just wanted that flexibility of being able to take them out. Um, because with her, with my cat Tabby, we used to decide on a Wednesday if we wanted to go on the go away on the weekend. And I just wanted that flexibility with our two cats. Um, and so we were just like, oh, let's just train them. I knew that they were harnesses. I knew a bit more about carriers and things like that. So I was like, I'll just train them to do the same thing. Um, and then I we had an issue with our harness. So I went to the wonderful world of Instagram and it was only when we did that that I realized, hey, I'm not the only crazy person who does this. There's so many people out there who do this. So I started connecting with different people and hearing their amazing stories. And everyone was so helpful. Like everyone was giving us so much advice. So um, what I decided was initially I created Cat Explorer just to be a depository of that advice. But then as I got to know everyone all around the world, there's these amazing stories in our community and I wanted to share those stories. So then I kind of transitioned Cat Explorer to be a bit more of a community and now it's it's grown so much it's been amazing to see and we've also got the cat explorer podcast as well where we chat to people like yourself emily where we share everyone's stories as well yes i i always enjoy the episodes of the cat explorer podcast as they drop it's uh you've created such a wonderful community with that and with those podcasts every week you feel like you get to know all of these people and cats like on a more personal level it's it's really great yeah we've got some amazing members and it's been wonderful to be able to share their stories yeah well um before we dive into our chat on harness and leash training i just want to remind everybody to say hello in the comments let us know you're here um take a screenshot if you're watching on your phone tag 
Kitty Cat Go Adventures and Cat Explorer dot community on Instagram and put it in your Instagram stories. We'd love to, you know, interact with you guys and see who's watching. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with our chat. So our the first topic I wanted to talk about is picking out a cat harness. There are so many harnesses out on the market um, and it can be really overwhelming for someone who's just getting started to figure out, you know, which one should they get uh, if they get a kitten, if they have a kitten, should they get a kitten harness or a cat harness and, you know, all the different styles, all of that stuff. Um, so Hasara, tell me about like what you look for in a cat harness and how, how would you advise someone to find one? I think um, the best analogy I can say for a cat harness is also, for example, when we look at jeans, each one of us has a different type of jeans that we like to wear, different brands, different shapes and things like that. Just like us, our cats are quite individual as well. And it also depends on what kind of cat exploring you want to do with your cat as well. So for example, if you want to go exploring the snow, you would use a different harness compared to one that you'd be doing going up a mountain when it's really, really hot. And similarly, if you were going to go stand up paddle boarding with your cat, you would use a different harness there as well. So I think it really does depend on your cat, depends on you and depends on the activities that you're going to do. If we take a step back and look at a kitten, you'd also have a different harness there because a lot of the normal harnesses that bigger cats wear would not fit on a kitten. Um, they do have kitten harnesses now. I usually recommend starting with a H style. So those are stringy types of harnesses just because that's the easiest way to start training your cat because there's less um, surface area that's touching the harness to your cat. So they get used to having something on their back. Um, if you've got a very, very small kitten, um, you can also try using a ferret harness. So they are usually like those H style string ropey types of harnesses as well. Um, it's it means that you can start training them when you're at home before they get their vaccinations and things like that. And similarly, if you're doing water activities with your cat, I also recommend do using those H-style harnesses because if it gets wet, it's going to hold less of that water. And if you were using a jacket-style harness, um, that would hold a lot of water and it could um, not only would that make your cat cold or have that extra water touching them, it also could hold that water and it could get quite heavy. Um, if you're doing something in the snow. Similarly, I would use a harness that's got a lot more cover coverage so your cat stays warm. And if you're going somewhere in the heat, I'd recommend one that's got less um, surface area with your cat and also one that's not too thick as well. So some of the mesh harnesses can be quite thick. So those are the vest style ones. Similarly, a jacket harness can be too thick for hot weather as well. I know it's not ideal to be like, there are all these different types of harnesses. It really depends on your cat. You have to try these all out. But um, realistically, you wouldn't wear, chances are you wouldn't wear the same jeans that your best friend wears because they just won't fit you and won't work right. So similarly with har um, harnesses for cats as well. Yeah, I love how you pointed out that even the type of adventuring you're doing will affect what kind of harness. Um, I is in regards to your point about like each cat is different even between my cats I have one cat that one style of harness works really well for him and then one of my other cats you know a different style of harness works for her so you know unfortunately like you said there's no like straight ahead answer you might have to buy one and try it out and if it doesn't work you might you know get a different one um, a different style and it is some trial and error for sure. Yeah, Cause I remember um, the first kind of harness that I got for my cats, I got because it was a pretty popular style of harness, but um, one of my cats, Kylo Ren has slipped out of it like twice on adventures, but, but lots of other people use that style really successfully. So, you know, yeah, I definitely agree with the whole, there's not one, one straight answer for that question, but um thank you for explaining all the the different types and what they're good for yep sure and um, i think something i forgot to mention is also the length of your cat's fur as well so i've heard that cats with really long hair actually find the jacket harnesses can cause like um, friction and rubbing and then cause the fur to mat as well so just mm. be aware of yeah that's a good point 
All right. Um, well, if anybody has any questions along the way about anything that we're talking about, feel free to drop them in the comments and we will address them. Um, I know in my Facebook group, I did a poll last week asking people if they found the right harness for them or if they were still looking. And some people were saying that they had started the training process with their cat, but hadn't found that harness yet. So um, if you're one of those people and you need a little guidance or suggestions, just let us know and we'll be happy to um, help you as much as we can. Um, so after picking out a harness, once you find that, that perfect harness for your cat, or at least a harness that will at least get you started, um, the next step is going to be leash training. Um, so Hasara, can you walk us through like a basic outline of how one would go about starting to harness and leash train their cat? Yeah, Emily, sorry, we're having technical difficulties. I can't hear you right now. Ah, oh no. Um, okay. I am not sure. Let me try. I can hear you. You can hear me now? Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> sorry, right, viewers. So I was, um, I, the last thing I heard was, um, you're talking about how people in your Facebook group have tried a few harnesses and they're, um, they're just starting at the beginning there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they've, some have said that they found the perfect harness. Some have said that they are still looking, they haven't quite found that one. Um, so I just encouraged people to, um, drop a comment if they have a question about harnesses or need some suggestions. Um, but after, after you find a harness, the next step is going to be the harness and leash training process. I can't hear you again. Oh, no. Um, I'm, hold on. I can hear you now. Okay. okay. I don't know whether it's on my end or your end. I don't know either. Uh, it's the nature of these uh, live things. You never know what's going to happen. Makes it more entertaining, right? <laughs> yes, right? Um, well, can you walk us through the basic outline of um, harness and leash training a cat? Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. So I think the first step is getting that harness. So I usually recommend trying to just get like a, a H style harness just because they are the cheapest ones available and they're ones that you can easily get from a pet store. Um, I know a lot of us are sheltering in, in place at the moment. So for example, you can get them from Amazon or something like that. Um, the first step that I would normally do is understand whether your cat is treat motivated or play motivated. So for example, our cat Lumos is very treat motivated. Any food he just absolutely loves. So I've spent some time trying to understand what food he really likes. And I use that when we're training him. Um, our cat Noxie is a lot more play motivated. So when we train her, we spend a lot more time focusing on play. I'm um, using wand toys or just um, she really likes toy mice. So we use those a lot when we're training her. Um, the first step I would do is get your cat used to noticing the harness, not seeing it as a toy, but understanding that it's just something that's good that's near them. Um, and not being freaked out about it. So um, the first thing I would do is introduce them to the harness. Just put it next to them, give them a treat, get them used to the fact that this harness is good. And then the next step I would do is once they've not being freaked out about the harness, I would put them on, put it on them, but not clasp it in. So just for example, just sitting it on top of them. For example, if they're seated, just sit it on, put it on top of them and then give them a treat. And once they've gotten used to that, then I'd start slowly clasping it around them and putting it on. Um, and I think a lot of people, this is the point where your cat does the flop. Um, mm. I think, to be honest, like 90% of cats do that flop when you put it on top of them. And I think that's the point where everyone's just like, no, nah, my cat doesn't like the harness. I'm not going to use, go ahead with this. Um, I think it is very important to watch your cat's behavior. So after a while, some cats do, they don't want anything to do with the harness and you do need to decide that they're not the type of cat to be a cat explorer. But it is possible to keep going when they do do that flop as well and continue to treat them with treats. And if your cat is play motivated, this is the perfect time to start playing with a toy. And then they suddenly realize that they can move in the harness. Because um, the analogy that I use is imagine we never wore clothes 
and then suddenly someone puts something on us of course we're going to flop it's going to be like what what is this straight jacket on me yeah and um that is exactly how our cats feel they just need to be shown that they can actually move in that harness hope that helps <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um and i like how you mentioned that if your cat does flop over to keep trying because i think that's probably the um thing that i hear the most when i run into people you know out on the hiking trail and they're like oh is that a cat i'm like yeah and they say oh i tried putting a harness on my cat once and they just wouldn't move and flopped over and i'm always like well did you know did you try again you know like don't let that first time completely um discourage you from trying again it doesn't mean that your cat can't do it or won't do it you just it takes some getting used to Exactly. Um, so after after someone has started the harness training process, you know it's time to attach the leash and get going on the trail. What what tips and advice do you have for someone who's leash training? Like what what's the basic process there for you? Yeah, I think we all get tempted. Like we got the harness on, our cat's not flopping over. Let's go straight to that hiking trail. Let's climb them. Can you hear me? I could not for a second. And yeah. then it's it showed up on my screen that you got muted. Your mic got muted or something. Yeah, that came up on mine as well. How about I start okay. with game? <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I do have to say it's pretty cool. I'm in Australia. You're in the US. So we're, this is working somehow. <laughs> it is very cool. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll take a step back and I'll start that part all over again. So um, I think once we get our cat in a harness and they stop that flop and you can see that your cat's doing really well, it can be so tempting to jump and say, oh, let's go on that um, five mile hiking trail up a mountain. We can do this. But that can be a bit too much of a shock to your cat. So it's, for example, the um, example I'd like to give there is imagine that you're suddenly like, oh, hey. I've got my running shoes on. They're a great pair of running shoes. They work for my feet. Let's go run a half marathon. You're not going to do that. You need to slowly work your way up to doing a full marathon. So it's similarly like that with your cats as well. I think the first step that I do once your cat is used to being on a harness and connecting the leash on them is actually just slowly expanding their boundaries. So for people who live in apartment blocks, that could be taking your cat out on the balcony. Or if you live, if you've got a courtyard, you can take them on the courtyard. Or if you've got a backyard, take them in the backyard. These are places where you control the environment. So it's less likely to have a dog come out of nowhere. It's less likely to have people come out of nowhere. It's just slowly getting your cat outside and getting used to those stimuli and being outside the four walls of your home. And once your cat gets used to that, I would slowly start taking them to places where people or other animals might come in that you can't control. So if you live in an apartment block and you're allowed to, you can take your cat into the um, corridors or into the stairwell that you've got there. Um, I just check with your the laws of your building corporate because sometimes, for example, in our apartment block, pets aren't pets paws aren't allowed to touch the floor in common areas so just make sure that that's okay um if you live in a house and you've got a front yard the front yard might be a great spot there if you don't live on a busy street um and then once your cats become comfortable in that area you can go to the next spot so for example a lot of apartment blocks have um little gardens in the front so that could be the next place that you go to. It's pretty boring for us humans, but your cat will get a lot of a lot out of that and they will get used to being around people and sounds and stuff like that. And then slowly expand those boundaries. So um, then you can go to a quiet park, then you can go to a place that's a bit busier and then just slowly expand those boundaries. And then if you do want to do that really long hike, maybe start with a really small hike and then slowly expand those. So start working towards a bigger hike and things like that. Yeah, those are all uh, really great uh, points of advice. Um, I think one of the things that, or one of the maybe more common mistakes that people make is just trying to rush through the process. And like you said, like going, oh, my, my cat's comfortable with the harness, let's go for a hike. And that just doesn't work. So, um, you know, if you're just starting off with harness and leash training your cat, I can't stress enough how important it is to be patient and follow your cat's lead. Um, and if your cat gets spooked one time, you know, the first time you take them outside, that's okay. 
um, go back inside, but you can try again. You know, don't let one one negative experience or something discourage you, just like with the harness flopping thing. It's not, probably not gonna happen perfectly every time, you know, when you're first starting. Um, so on the subject of struggles, actually, that, that sort of segues into the next thing I wanted to talk about is that even us who have, you know, more experience adventuring, I know I still run into struggles and have struggles with my cats when we're out on the trail. Um, Kylo in particular is scared of dogs. And um, so we've been having to work on that um, with him. Sophie is great. She has no problems with anyone. You know, everybody's different. What kind of struggles and things have you experienced in your process with Lumos and Noxie? Yeah, so you probably would have noticed me laughing when you were saying the first time you go out might be a bit of a challenge. So I, um, now looking back, I'm just like, why did I not think this through? So I spent a lot of time harness training Lumos in our courtyard, but I didn't do the same with Noxie. But Noxie was the first one that I took into our laneway. Like, I don't really understand what happened in my brain there. I should have, just because I trained one cat one way doesn't mean the other cat was trained in that spot. I should, should have trained them together at the same time doing the same things. So with Noxie, she was good at the harness and I kind of just skipped the whole taking her into the courtyard, taking her into the apartment block. The first place I took her was our laneway. And of course she freaked out. She freaked out quite significantly. And I was just like, oh, I don't know whether she's up for this. I don't know whether this is the right thing to do. So then what we did was we actually took a really big step back and started training her again inside the house, got her used to the harness again, because I was worried that she'd suddenly associate it with being scared outside, then took her into the courtyard, then took her into our apartment hall um, corridor, which I didn't realize was not what we were allowed to do at the time. It was only something we found out afterwards. So, and then I slowly got her used to going back into that laneway. And now that laneway is her favorite place to go. So I think back to three years ago, I, I it was quite traumatic for me to see her so stressed there. So we took a really big step back and now she's really loves going there. Um, another issue is we do have issues with dogs. So we use our cat backpacks or our cat strollers and they jump in those every time they see a dog. It's uh, been a long process, but we now can get them in on command or it will just be like, come on, get in quickly when there is a dog. Um, and that's really, really helped us. It's been quite a game changer for us. Um, and I suppose another struggle a lot of people have is taking their cat in the car. I think, um, and the, for those who are struggling with that, it's something that we all do struggle with. Only a few cats mm -hmm. are comfortable being in the car. It's just finding something that works for you. Um, a challenge that Daniel, my husband and I have is that we have been in a car accident before. So we're very particular about making sure that our cats are restrained in mm -hmm. um, crash tested uh, carriers and things like that. I know a lot of cats prefer roaming in the car. Arnoxy definitely prefers that, but we're quite strict on making sure that she's in the carrier because I've been in a couple of car accidents. One was pretty big and that kind of showed me the amount of damage that could happen if she was roaming. And that process we had to start from very small. So getting her used to the car, getting used to the carriers, not moving the car, letting her getting, get comfortable with the car and then slowly increase the length of our car drives as well. So that's definitely been a challenge we've had and it's one that we continue to have. So what some people might not know is that we've recently had a baby. So our car back seat has set up, has completely changed. So we've had to start retraining again. We've, um, it's been a bit of a challenge with COVID because we haven't really been taking our cats on long drives because you can't really go anywhere right now. Yeah. So when we do get back into traveling again with all three of them, we're going to have to start from the beginning again. And that's something we're very, very conscious on. So we've been using the carriers that we use in the car. We've been setting them up at home as well and just to try and keep them used to that carrier. I hope that answered your question. I went yeah. Talked about a few different things there. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, some people who are just beginning think that, you know, people like you or me who have been adventuring with our cats for maybe a few years never have any problems and that it's all perfect and smooth sailing. And, you know, that's not the case. We all have struggles along the way. And having a community like 
um, you know, the, the whole cat adventuring community on Instagram and Facebook and all of that to support each other as we go through whatever our different struggles may be is um, helpful and just knowing that we all have them. Mm. So thanks for sharing about, you know, the struggles that that you've had with, with Lumos and Noxie. I know with Kylo, I've been really discouraged with him recently because he used to be like my best hiker. He, I mean, I would put him on a trail and he would hike forever, like until I made him stop. And then he had an interaction with a dog, like it's probably been a year and a half since it happened. And um, like the dog didn't actually get to him or anything, but it got too close and he freaked out. And it was this big dramatic scene. And I like, I'm sure we've all experienced that embarrassment. Like, oh my gosh, people think I'm torturing my cat, you know? Um, and since then he's just, uh, not been the same on the trail. He's always just sort of like on edge, like looking over his shoulder, like, is there a dog coming? And so we've been working on that and making progress, but all of that to say that we all have struggles and it's okay. Um, so speaking of still talking on the subject of struggles in my Facebook group, I asked some people like what their most common issues and struggles are and when they're out on hikes or in their training process and i have a few that came up multiple times and so i wanted to see if you had any um, advice or tips for some of these things so um, one of the number one things that comes up is getting your cat to follow a path you know people when they try to take their cat on a hike their cat wants to go this way and that way and all the directions except for the direction that you want them to go um, do you have any tips that have worked for you to get your cats to follow a path? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd also like to mention something that I read in regards to dogs, but I think it's very relevant to cats. And I agree, like one of our biggest frustrations, like we've all done it, where you sit by a bush for like an hour <laughs> because your cat is obsessed with sniffing this bush. It's the most boring thing. Most of the time it's right next to, next to some stranger's window, so you look like a total creep. <laughs> The reality is that your cat's sniffing that because it's providing them some sort of enrichment. So I, every time we're on a hike and, for example, Lumos goes in some direction, I try and think of, okay, there's something interesting to him there. We need to remember that he's interested in that. We're doing this for our cats. We're not really – we're doing it for ourselves too, but our focus is our cats and that's providing them some enrichment to be sniffing this thing. So um, – <laughs> I know it's frustrating. It drives me nuts sometimes. I've had an ant bite me on a butt while on my butt while I was waiting for my cat <laughs> next to a bush one. So it happens. It's not convenient, but try and remember that and try not to get frustrated because if we get frustrated, our cats get frustrated and then it, it just becomes an escalating situation. But still, we do want to do those hikes. So what I recommend is um, something that's worked really well for me is having one person at, in the front having your cat in the middle and you holding the leash. So that way your cat has someone to follow. Um, and I know it sounds silly when you're in public, but we all do those baby voices where we encourage our cats mm. to do things. So yeah. just having the person in front, encouraging your cat to keep walking, turning around and encouraging them to keep go going. And like if your cat responds really well to good boy or good girl or something like that, using those every time they walk a really good stretch of the path, they start seeing that as a positive reinforcement. If your cat really likes treats and you're comfortable with giving them treats while on the trail, if they do a really good walk down the trail, just give them a treat as well. Um, I find a lot of cats actually do really well on well-defined trails. So by that, what I mean is, and also tight ones, so ones that actually have a well-defined sides so that they know that they just keep going that way so down the trail. Um, I find that works really well. And I know some members in our community actually have started. So you can use a wand toy or you can use a small stick or something for them to follow. So have that person in front dragging this along the trail and then your cat will follow that and see it as a playful thing as well. Yes, I've recently started doing that with Griffin. Um, you know, he's our newest adventurer and he gets distracted by every leaf, every piece of dirt, everything. He's like, oh, let me let me sniff this. Oh, let me nibble at that. And it's like, oh my gosh, Griffin, can you just like stay focused? And um, 
I've started now grabbing like a stick if we're on a hike in the woods and dragging it behind me. And my husband will have Griffin on the leash because we do the same thing, like one person in front, cat in the middle, and then person in the back. And that works really well. But having that stick, Griffin sees that and he's like, ooh, I'm, I must get that stick. And I, I mean, he could walk, I could carry that stick for miles and he'd probably just keep following that. So that that has worked. And um, I have had the same experience and definitely agree on your point about staying on those narrow paths. Um, especially with um, Kylo and Griffin, if we get to a spot on a trail that's like sort of an open field, it's like they don't really know where to go or what to do and they'll like freeze and like look around like, uh, you know, what do I do next? So if you're, if you're having those struggles walking your cat, I would recommend, like Asara said, finding, um, finding a hiking trail that is maybe more narrow and that might help keep your cat on track. Um, so another issue that comes up in the group a lot is, um, lack of consistency. Like sometimes your cat, go, you take your cat out and they might walk for an hour and sometimes they might walk for five minutes and then be, then be done. Would you, would you, um, say that that has anything to do with like the cat not being interested or what, what would you have to say about that? I think um, one way to think about it is say some days you, f you get out of bed on the right side of the bed and you're willing to do a workout and you're really excited, really into it. But then you have another day where you've just like, I'm not in the mood for this. And that happens to our cats as well. So some days they're like, oh, yeah, I'm really keen to go on that hike. I'm really keen to do, for example, with our um, Noxie, she'll be really keen to do a five kilometer hike. She'll love it. And then the next day she'll be like, no, nope, over it, not keen. Um, so I think sometimes you just really need to read your cat and remember that we're doing this for our cats. I know as humans, we tend to have this plan for the day and we want to do the hike and then we want to go to a brewery and we want to do all these different things. We just need to be prepared that we might need to change that plan up just because our cat's not in the mood for it as well. Um, and I suggest don't be discouraged if you have a day long. Don't be discouraged when you have a day when your cat's not keen on um, doing the five kilometer hike. Just be prepared to change things up and come up with a second plan. Um, usually what we do is if we do a hike and we realize that our cats aren't into it, we might just just have a picnic instead or just do something else that's something slightly different or just go and sit by that boring bush and just let them sniff it. <laughs> yeah, but that, it's just not working that day. Um, sometimes your cat might be doing it if you've had that traumatic experience, for example, like what you were saying about Kylo Ren and the dog. So perhaps what you might want to do is just take a step back and go to a place that's a little less daunting for them perhaps think about the training that you've done and take them back to a place that they are, they know well and just get them a bit more comfortable as well. So I know it's not like we all want that straight answer of this is what you need to do next, but you kind of need to look at your cat, what's happened recently, what's happened on the day that you took them out and see if there's anything you need to change up. Yeah, I agree. And to your point about them, like have just being not in the mood for it, um, just like how sometimes we're not in the moods, you know, we have, unfortunately, our pets can't talk, you know, like we can. So if you ask your friend or whatever, hey, do you want to go to a movie? And they're like, nah, I don't really feel like it. They can tell you if they don't feel like it, but your cats can't. And so unfortunately, it just takes like you taking them out. And then maybe they're like, no, I don't feel like it. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> But definitely it's best to listen to that and not force them into it just because you want to, because then that could lead to them having a negative experience and them not wanting to go out the next time. Um, you know, I always try to tell people, every try to have everything be a positive experience as much as possible, because if you force your cat to do something they don't want to do and they're trying to tell you they don't want to do, then it's gonna hinder your progress instead of you know move it forward so listening to your cat's body language and following their cues is like number one number one hint and point yeah, yeah i completely agree um 
Okay, what would you have to say for someone whose cat with training, like if they're doing clicker training and things like that, like recall practice, or like how you said you get your cats to jump up on the backpack, if they listen and are listen to your commands and stuff inside when you're practicing, but then when you go outside, they are not listening at all. I think um, this kind of comes back to that idea I was talking about with harness training because I've done it too where our cats are harness trained, our cats are good with their backpacks and then suddenly I want to do some other skill. So what I'll do is they do it at home and then I suddenly take them out to a hike and then I'll be like, okay, I expect them to do it there. But in reality, it's kind of like that harness training again. We need to start small and slowly make our way up there. So trying it in ho at home, making sure that they can do it at home and then try again in that quiet place. So like your balcony, your courtyard or, or your backyard. So they slowly got that other distractions, but they're, you're working on getting them paying attention to you and doing the um, skill that you want them to do and then move into a slightly louder place and get them used to doing it there and then slowly make your way up and shift those barriers. Um, because I, I completely relate because you're like, hey, they can do this at home. This would be really useful on a hike. Let's go and do it there. But you kind of need to slowly make your way up. And it's hard work. I, I, I will agree. It's a hard, like I find it hard work sometimes as well to do it with our cats. But you'll get yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've um, been doing a lot of clicker training with Kylo Ren, and he'll he'll listen outside sometimes. Inside, he's like a rock star, and then you go outside, and you know, there's just so much outside that they're that's distracting. They're like, "Oh, what's this? I don't want to pay attention to you. You know, you're old news. I want to look over here at the squirrel or the bird." And so, keeping them focused is a challenge, but. Um, I like what you said about like going back to the harness and leash training, like maybe just start your tricks inside, then maybe move to your porch or your yard and just kind of incrementally um, make it more, more difficult for them by, you know, until they're able to do it out on the hike or the park or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Good tips. All right. Um, I had a group member say, and I have this experience with Griffin, he is such a brat, um, when they're trying to get their cat to go a certain direction, or maybe it's time to turn around and go home or something, and they pick them up and they just throw a tantrum, like completely brat out. They don't want to do what you have to say. Um, what what do you do about that? So we have that experience with our Noxie um, to the point that I think my neighbors might think that I'm torturing her occasionally because they can hear her in our laneway just losing her mind. Um, I think something that I keep trying to tell myself, and I'm not very good at it, it's, it's a skill that I'm trying to work on, is I think the first step is to try and stay calm yourself because if you start stressing out about it because like they're, they're yelling, they're making so much noise, they're being difficult to manage and then you probably start stressing out and then your cat picks up your vibes as well and how you're feeling and then they start stressing out and then you've just got this situation that just escalates so if you can try and stay calm try and breathe um, one thing that I do is I count to five in my head as silly as that might sound but that kind of helps me calm down um, as long as this situation is safe as well so if you've got a dog coming I think the first thing you need to do is make sure that your cat is safe and then count mm -hmm. to five um but it's just, I think that's one of the first things that you need to do is just try and stay calm yourself. In those situations, I do use our cat backpacks or strollers and encourage our cats to get into the backpack. Um, and then, then you've got them in a space that you can control them in and manage them and take them home. Um, if it's about going home and your cat likes to throw a tantrum, which ours definitely do, we've been working on creating a fun routine when we get home. So for example, giving them treats when they walk in the door or um, setting the backpack in a certain spot at home and then there's some fun stuff that happen. So they start looking forward to coming home because if you're enjoying something, the last thing you want to do is leave. It's like us not wanting to leave after a holiday. We don't want to come home. So we need to try and make coming home as enticing as possible. Um, I think it is a bit more challenging if they're throwing a tantrum while you're out and about. So um, Noxie has had a history of wanting to go into private property especially ones that say private property, property, no trespassing. There's like huge signs. And for some reason she sees that sign and wants to go in there. So that <laughs> is really challenging. So we've actually got some of her favorite treats that are like reserved for those situations. So we can try and get her out of those um, incidents where she's trying to get into a property. Um, 
I think it really does depend on your cat and yourself and where you are and what you've got going on. Um, sometimes you might have to play that up based on their experience, their um, personality, as well as what you've got on hand as well. Um, I know some members in our community actually carry like a pillowcase with them so that they can easily grab their cat, well, not grab, restrain their cat and um, take their cat out of the situation as well. So maybe that's something that you can keep in, um, in mind. The pillowcases are easy because they're just like, you can just fold them really into a small um, piece and put that in your backpack. So that's an option there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, Griffin, Griffin is the worst about that. They, he, he'll, you know, might be sniffing something and it's like, okay, I've let you sniff that now for a while. Let's move it along. And then you try to even just pick him up and he's like, eh, and like completely freaks out. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I think all of your, um, your advice for that was really helpful. I hadn't thought about the pillowcase thing. That That's a, that's a new one. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. We use a little pet blanket, but lately I've been thinking I'm going to change that over to a pillowcase because that might be a bit more useful. Yeah, yeah. It seems like that, like you said, it can fold really small, like smaller than a blanket. Mm. Um, all right. I have one more um, challenge that is maybe the number one or number two challenge that people bring up is encountering people. And I, we talked about dogs briefly and how you've trained your cats to get in the backpack um, on command. So that way, if the dog's coming, you can get them in the backpack. Um, do you do the same for people? Or what, what would you recommend for someone whose cats get nervous if people are coming on the trail? So we've got an interesting conundrum. Um, Lumos loves people, um, which has been quite a challenge these COVID times because they don't want people patting him at the moment um so for him we'll assess whether the people are want to pat him and then we'll just deal with that as it comes um with noxie she is definitely scared of people so sometimes she will just pancake i um which is when they go down to the ground and they try they pretend that no one can see them when obviously you can but anyway um, <laughs> Shh, don't I tell them that <laughs> yeah exactly don't tell them that um, I think it really depends on the situation. So she sometimes will pancake down and we'll stand next to her and we will tell her it's a. I just realized I went on mute there. So what, I'll go back a little bit. So when she does pancake down on the ground, we'll give her pats. We'll tell her it's okay. Sometimes we will treat her if someone, if there's a lot of people around and they're not moving along as fast as you would like. Um, other times she will jump in the backpack. So we use that backpack for a lot of things, particularly when they see people, when they see dogs, when they see other cats, when they hear like cars and stuff, sometimes that will get them a bit uncomfortable as well. And um, sometimes um, in Australia, we've got magpies, which can be, which are birds that can attack. They attack yeah. during spring because they're very possessive of their environment and particularly when they see a cat. So when we see a magpie, I always put them in the backpack um and things like that so we use the backpack a lot for that but then we also do a lot of those positive reinforcement to try and make sure that she realizes that people aren't too scary as well yeah um and i know like desensitizing your cat to being around people is dif a difficult thing to work on right now with covid you know like it's not like you can have a friend over to try to um you know get your cat comfortable with new people um so that's definitely something that's difficult to work on in the times you know where we are in the world right now but i think you know in normal circumstances hopefully not too far in the future um doing things like having family members or friends come over um, and introduce your cat to them and just like you know you would train like you you know we talked about the harness and leash training and you ease them into it i think doing things like that would be helpful as well. And maybe not just meeting friends and family at your home, but also while you're out at the park or something so that they're also meeting new people in a new environment. I agree. And I think it's a good point that you bring up COVID because I think we all need to be prepared that our cat socialization skills would have taken a quite a big step back due to what's been going on over the last 12 months or so. Um, we have to be prepared that when things get back to normal, I'm not sure when that will happen, but we're prepared that we will have to probably start that socialization skills 
again and it will be challenging for all of us i believe yeah yep i agree um well that's that's it for my questions for hasara if, for those of you that are watching if if you have any questions for me and hasara please feel free to drop them in the comments we're keeping an eye on those um i'll give you guys a second to type out your questions if you have any um, and while we're waiting for that, Hasara, can you tell us where we can find you and Cat Explorer on, online, on social media and everywhere? Yep, sure. So our website is catexplorer.co. Um, we've got lots of tips on how you can go exploring with your cat, how to get started. We've got a free harness training guide there as well for you, um, how to find the right product. So like we talked about the getting the right harness, we've got like lots of details. A lot of the things that I covered, it's quite easy to follow. We've got like dot points in terms of how to find um, the right harness for your cat, as well as the right backpack. Um, we talk about what to do if your cat climbs a tree and things like that. So um, there's a lot of information there. Oh, also how to go on a road trip with your cat. And we also share stories from our community, so about other cats, and that's all there on our website. We're on social media, so Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, at catexplorer.community. Um, we, uh, we share a lot of tips there from our community about different topics that relate to cat exploring. We've also got a Facebook group called Cat Explorer Community as well. And if you like podcasts, we've actually got a podcast, which is called Cat Explorer Podcast. So each episode we either talk to a cat explorer or a cat expert and they share their tips about cat exploring and even things about like how you can keep your cat entertained at home we also talk to a lot of behaviorists and talk about cat behavior because that's something that we like we said we need to be aware of a cat's behavior while we're exploring and you can listen to the cat explorer podcast either on our website or you can also listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts so that's like spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, stitcher iHeartRadio. honestly the list goes on there <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, and if you have never listened to the Cat Explorer podcast, then I definitely recommend it. There are so many episodes. How many episodes do you have now? I think we're up to 60. I've like we've recorded more than 75, so there's a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all they're all so helpful and on different topics. And so if you haven't checked that out, guys, I definitely encourage you to do that because they're encouraging and helpful. I've learned things whenever I listen to the um the episodes they're they're awesome so and our first ever episode was with you emily uh, yeah that's right <laughs> that was a that was a fun a fun interview so it's nice we've come full circle mm -hmm. i was Sarah's first guest on the podcast and she's my first guest for my uh live video show so um that's been fun mm -hmm. Um, well, it doesn't look like we have any questions. I see some people have been watching. I'll just um, say hey to Trish and Susie and uh, Adventures of Joey and Lexi. Grace are here and my husband Bobby is watching. Um, so thank you guys all for watching. Um, and if no one else has any questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. I. I um, want to mention that um, the next episode of Kitty Cat Go Live will air on Wednesday, February 10th at 8.30 p.m. We'll be talking about cold weather cat adventuring with Steph K Ketterer from The Adventures of Mike and Lily, which um, some of you probably know on Instagram. Um, so thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope you learned something new and had some fun hanging out with us. And we'll see you on the trail. Thank you so much for having me as well. Appreciate it. Yeah.